are pleased to be with you here on Channel 5. Tom Brenneman along with Dave Newrath and Jennifer Kleekamp. David, tell us a little bit about Don Hughes. Don Hughes has got a, a powerful cupped wrist, and he's a big, strong fella. You can see him right there staying low at the line, which is the key for big people, and getting through the ball strongly. Don Hughes is one heck of a competitor, and he's going to give Greg Lothian about all he can handle. And uh, Tommy, but I tell you what, it's been a while since I've seen Greg this pumped up. Well, you, we talked about a little bit in the first match, the intensity and the look on his face and how determined he is to play with consistency today and just like the last match starts right out of the gate with a strike. That's what you want to do. Issue the challenge and then sit down. Let your competitor think about it a little bit. Jennifer, tell us a little bit about Don Hughes. Well, he's 36 years of age. Uh, he does average 220. Very impressive. And he is a concrete finisher with Baker Construction. And this rolled that 300 game I see as well. Well, he starts off in a similar fashion as Jim Beckler did the last round. What does that do to you psychologically, I guess, Dave, when you come out? You talked about you want to get off with a good start and get that strike. Does it take anything out of you when you roll that first one and you don't knock them down? Well, no, it doesn't really take anything out of you, Tom, but what you have to be careful of is to not let your first couple of shots set a pattern for the match. Um, you come out of the wings, you're... you're anxiety levels a little high more often than not you're a little more tentative with your first shot mm -hmm. than you will be further on in the match and that's exactly why he didn't carry that it was a little too cautious instead of just letting it letting it rip you know Jennifer we talked about the numerous amounts of times you were on last year what's the difference when you have to do this on television well um, for a lot of people it is a lot of pressure the lights are a big factor shining in your eyes as you're walking down the lane there's no question about it it's just a matter of experience uh, if you're good under pressure you'll be good with camera lights on and Don Hughes stepped right back up there after the spare in the first and drilled him in the second but Greg Lothian has already rolled a strike in the first and boy he really looks ready I don't think we can say that enough times you can just just tell by the way he's approaching this entire game. Boom. Got the shot in, Tommy, like we were going to talk about before, but he's so pumped up. His, his adrenaline carried this as much as anything else. Watch him here. Look at it on his face, the emotion and the intensity. Look at the eyes. Head pin going to the wall, coming off, tripping the four into the five, and then the head pin takes out the seven. He likes it, and he was pumped up. Is there a reason, Dave, why some players seem to get more pin action than others? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's in the amount of wrist roll and finger lift that you physically put on the ball. And, and uh, right now, Greg's got it together. If you start to hook the ball too soon, you stay in the ball too long, your wrist actually starts the rotation too soon, kills the roll. you got to combine the wrist roll with the finger lift, and then you get a ball something like Jennifer throws. A powerhouse. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Dave. I'm still trying to work up to your revs, but I'll get there maybe. <laughs> you know, I, what I'm really interested in happening this year, and I certainly hope it does, wouldn't it be something else if Jennifer and David both qualified at the same time? Oh, ho. I'd be ready. sitting up here with absolutely no clue. Mr. Lonely, he is Mr. Lonely. No, okay. only kind right, of right. guy. Man. Right, right. Let's hold the singing off for a few weeks. We don't want to scare people right out of the gate there. You got that right. Not too much, at least. <laughs> Maybe Jennifer can do it a little better. <laughs> than no, we definitely can. not. <laughs> I wouldn't dare that one. Well, Jennifer just make, uh, missed making the show. And uh, was it two weeks ago, Jen? What was I, 750-something? Um, I, I qualified for the roll-off, the pre-king roll-off, with 758, and then bowled like a schnook over at uh, Strikes and Spares. So... Uh, I just missed making the show the first week myself, but uh, I'm feeling good. My game's up. Jennifer's throwing the ball good, so we may not make it the same week, but you will probably be minus one of us one of these Down weeks. the road. Down the road. Well, Don Hughes is starting to put it together after that first frame spare. But he's got some tough competition in this guy, Greg Lothian. Week 10, too much speed, a little too direct comes off with uh, with what you want to come off with. You don't want to come off a string with a with a hole. 
a split, uh, a multiple pin spare, at least there you knew you hit the pocket, your arm swing a straight. And picks up the spare with relative ease. It's kind of funny here on Greg. And David, uh, folks, take a look at the scoreboard at home. Well, there you see it. Uh, Greg Lothian, 79 in the third. Don Hughes, however, has strikes working, which technically gives him 80 in the third. One pin advantage, Don Hughes, with a strike working, actually gives him an 11 pin lead at this point. Big frame here for Lothian, and he comes through with a strike. Boy, he smoked that ball. An awesome strike. I'll tell you what, as awesome as this. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll resume in just a minute on the Hudipole King of TV Bowling. mushroom into something here but uh, you got to keep striking and the break may have had an effect we'll see maybe not <laughs> four strikes in a row you know we talked about Don was on our show last year and uh, he had some awfully good moments well I'll tell you what it's he's having a lot of good moments right now one shot at a time 19 pins he's definitely in the driver's seat at this point However, Greg Lothian has got a lot of paper left, Tom. We certainly still have a long way to go. And uh, Don had an impressive qualifying score. Yeah, he had our highest score of the weekend, a 769. Not too shabby. Got a little bit light there, a little bit soft with that shot, cutting through the head pin. Fantastic break to uh, physically break down the split and only leave a single pin spare, the four pin. Now, does this open the gate a little bit for Greg when he comes back up? It breaks the momentum, Tommy. Uh, Don Hughes has been striking. Now, Greg, Greg's job at this point is to uh, don the lanes in the sixth frame. He's got a strike working. He can cut the lead back down to nine pins with the first one and physically take a one pin lead with the next one. So. Uh, Greg's job is very clear cut, and that is to uh, strike right here and keep on striking. And here comes Greg Lothian. He's been on our King of TV Bowling show in 86 4 times last year and not going to get it. Crucial shot, and what happens so often, you amp it up a little bit more. You hit it a little harder. Watch it here on the replay. Hits the 15th board. Now, watch this ball. It's going to cut so sharply through. Head pin's going to go straight back. Push the two pin into the wall. Two pins going up and around. Kicks the seven over. Seven goes in back of the four pin. Close, but no cigar. Look out. Whoa. No kidding. Do you sometimes take those for granted? Absolutely. As I said, I missed a five in the middle of the alley mm. and a six pin, which is not much more tough than the five pin. Two miss making the show, so you definitely cannot take those for granted. What were you saying to yourself after that pair? Well, see, I actually didn't know it at the time that I had missed making it, but I hadn't shot a lot of spares. When you're striking like that, you're just not throwing spares, so I missed one to the right and one to the left. That's just the way it goes sometimes situation is this seventh frame Greg Lothian exactly 10 pins down that's how you get back into the match that's how you put the pressure back on your opponent this is a fantastic shot he's 10 down he strikes here he puts the pressure back on let's take a look at it look at these eyes the eyes alone could knock the pins down fantastic shot look at him <laughs> not even blinking ooh ooh I don't know if I no, if I was a pin, I'd fall down. There you have it. <laughs> exactly 10 pins. The strike gives him the advantage. Don Hughes, left lane, has to get back in at two. And he does. That's the way to do it. Both these guys, the last two frames, pressure shots. Exactly. A love tap 10. You're going to see it here. Now, what's going to do the damage? Second pin from the right-hand side of your screen. It is the six pin. Watch it there, ladies and gentlemen. There it goes to the wall. Now, what's going to happen? <gasps> Ooh, mm. a little belly. A little bump there. Uh, try a little little belly into the belly there. 
Greg you, Lothian knows that uh, uh, he's still playing, Tommy. You know, Jennifer, you talked about not even watching. He was yes. looking off to the right, and as we look at him now, he's not even watching exactly. Don right. Bull. I wouldn't watch either. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's all kinds of views and uh, on that. Some people don't like to watch. Uh, other people really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. There were some uh, some pros back in the uh, late 70s that would, you know, physically turn all the way around. But when the crowd's here and you hear the crowd reaction, you, you don't have to watch. You know what's going on. Wow. Absolutely perfect. These guys are really starting to heat it up. We have got a match on our hands here, David. I tell you what, look at this one. Watch this one again. Intensity, you bet. This is to keep him 10 pins down only. The eyes again tell the story. 10 pins in the pit. Every pin doing his yeah. job. Gonna try to step back up there and do the same. You know, I think we ought to mention to the folks at home, we talk so much about league play, but you don't have to be in a league to go bowling. No. Just come on up to any lane and... It is a lot of fun. Go to your local BPA house and just have fun. Wow. Critical shot. Ninth frame. Very, very important to, to get a building block. And what's he do? He leaves a soft 10. Let's watch it here. Deflection is going to be the key here. Gets the ball in about 15. Now watch the ball jump to the right. Hits the head pin. Now, hits the three, jumps to the right. That's the six pin going into the channel and not doing his job on the 10 pin. That's the one he wanted. That's the one he really needed to get back into the match. So how so how are things standing at this point, Dave, as we take a look at the scoreboard? Well, at, at that point, going into it, you see him there with 188 and the eight. Don Hughes, however, has the momentum. He's got the strikes working. Mathematically, the game is still not over. But if Don Hughes strikes on this ball, all he has to do in the 10th is mark, and Greg is history. Well, you just said it. All he has to do now is mark. Because the big guy just stepped up there and mowed him down. Well, the potential at this point for Greg Lothian, the best he can do is 238. Don Hughes already has 20-something uh, in the eighth <laughs> frame, with, depending upon his pin count, without even throwing a ball. So that gives him 220, 250 pace. Don Hughes would have to uh, any kind of a mark. And it is history. That. Well, Jennifer, you should know, you've seen hundreds, yeah. literally hundreds of those. Yeah, a lot of times you can really tell as soon as the ball's let down whether it is at least going to make it to the pocket or not. As you saw Greg leave in the last frame that week 10, it was stipulative. He was just trying to place it in the pocket. Do a lot of players bear down on that a little bit too much, do you think? Uh, I don't know if you can bear down too much. The ninth frame is a key frame, especially if you're down match play competition is going to really, really bring out uh, the best in you or the worst in you. Greg made a good shot, Tommy. Don't get me wrong. Greg made a, made a good shot, but it wasn't good enough today. Well, that guy right there has been good enough today because after a spare in the first, he's going to finish with 260-something. That ain't bad. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> You roll 260s consistently, you'd be on this show a lot. A lot, that's <laughs> Thank right. Thank you. We now, do have a lot of representatives today. Uh, a nice showing from everybody, especially from Hudipole. We have Mike Schott, who's the vice president of Hudipole, here with his three children. We also have Ken Ewald from Norky Distributors, Tony Plack from Hudipole Brewery, and Ray Richardson from Shanley for the Faro Distributors here over on this side of the river. A lot of folks out today for our first show of the year, and they will continue to come back all year long because we have got a dynamite season for you in 1988. If you thought last year was good, well, this year should be even better. Well, Greg's loosened up a little bit. I think he realizes that his fate has been determined in the first smile in a while. I've bowled with Greg over the years, um, especially in junior bowling. He's always been tops. He is very competitive. He wants to win, and he's intense. He'll be back, I guarantee it. Well, Don Hughes will move on in match play. We'll be back in just a moment on the Utah Pole King of TV Bowling.